Hey guys, this is Dan with Tactical Medical Solutions. I want to talk to you today about a really awesome piece of gear, the Slishman Traction Splint by Rescue Essentials. For those of you that have been in this field for any length of time, you've dealt with some of the older, more archaic models of traction splints. I promise you, this piece of gear is going to solve a lot of those issues we used to face. It's small and compact, lightweight, can be applied in less than 60 seconds. It does not extend past the end of the foot. It can be applied to a full-size adult all the way down to a pediatric patient. And one of the really awesome features is if there's a lower leg injury, it is not contraindicated. So let's say the patient has a tib-fib fracture or a partial or complete amputation. As long as we have musculature proximal to the calf, we can still achieve traction to the femur. Lastly, it's radiolucent. So once we get the patient to the hospital and they need to go to x-ray, we don't need to take the device off. So let's put this thing in play and show you how it's used. All right, the scene is safe. You may have someone on scene helping you by applying manual traction or you may be by yourself. We've taken the shoe off and we've done our assessment for circulatory, sensory, and motor function. We're good to go to apply the splint. So we're gonna start off by putting on the ankle strap first. Now, fortunately, our patient Al here today is a very calm, compliant, not writhing in pain type of a patient, but you need to anticipate that this patient could be experiencing a lot of pain and not exactly wanting to sit still while you apply this, so you may need some assistance holding your patient still. You want to make sure that the end cap is facing towards the patient's head. The next thing we're going to do is grab the actual bulk of the device and we're going to apply the hip strap first. Start by feeding the male end of the strap under the leg, utilizing that natural gap that's created by the back of the knee. Scissor it up into place, female end on top of the pelvis, bring the male end around, clip it in, then take the slack out gently, remembering we've got a broken bone up here, so be careful there. Now we're going to take the rod, unscrew it, feed it down, and insert the end into the end cap holder. Now if you take a look, this device is for the most part in place and it is not extending past the foot, which has always historically been a problem with traction splints. This model right here achieves the traction from the hip versus the old models that used to pull from the ankle. Now once everything is in place, we're going to undo this middle screw and gently start to apply manual coarse traction. And you'll feel it once it's in place and you'll see it once it's in place. Once it's there, we're going to tighten this screw down and that will hold the coarse traction in place. And now we're going to transition up to the top screw located at the hip. This is where we're going to achieve our fine traction. There's a mechanical advantage system inside the pole that will help you achieve whatever traction it is that you need to do. So we're going to undo the screw, hold and pull and that will finish off getting the traction that we need. Once that's there, we tighten this screw down and that's gonna hold that in place and we can let go. The last thing that we can apply is a mid-leg strap. This goes around the middle of the device and what this will do is help secure and bind the legs together to help restrict lateral movement. This is not required to help maintain traction on the leg. You're gonna make use of that natural gap that's created under the legs. Come around and fasten it back down. Again, all that's gonna do is limit the lateral rotation. It's not required to maintain and achieve traction. 